Hello friends, this is Scott. When I get down to the homestead, the first thing I do is check on the cats. And as you see here, I'm surprised to see they're all four together under the heat lamp. I was a little bit worried that they wouldn't uh, get along, but they're getting along great. So there's Theo and Willow. I guess Willow is my cat now. Uh, and there's Thing and there's Coquette. So yeah, I was kind of concerned that these cats would not be, you know, gentle with each other, but they're all enjoying the, the warmth and they're all getting along. So win-win. So I'm happy with that. So in the morning, the next morning, I got out to check on my animals, my cows, you know, first off, and you know the water is frozen solid. Now it's been getting down the low teens, so I'm afraid winter is here. The snows, I think, is going to stay on the ground, and every day I'm going to have to deal with the uh, with the ice in the in the water trough. But yeah, I didn't have a ton of water in there, but it froze, and you see all the way down the bottom, it's a good chunk of uh, ice. That chunk of ice will probably be there till spring, so we'll see how many chunks of ice I get in the in the pasture uh, this winter. But I did tell the neighbor that I'm gone when I'm gone, so uh, he makes sure he keeps his water uh, full because they tend to drink a lot over here, and he doesn't realize how much they're drinking. I think so. But now I no longer have the hose, so I've got to you know just haul buckets, and I've got this metal bucket that the previous owner left, and I'll just use that for water. So it took a few trips, and as you see here, I'm not you know the smartest tool in the tool shed, because I think I dumped more of it splashed out than went in. But, you know, I think I'd uh, try to save my problem of the ice. I'm only going to fill the water bowls up a little bit when I'm down here, uh, so that way, or the trough, so that uh, we don't have these icebergs. Hopefully the cows will drink most of it, and then uh, every day I'll just add a little bit, just enough for them to have. I was able to bring down, you know, nine or ten bags of leaves, but uh, as you see on the, with the snow on the ground, these leaves are going to be of no value to me in the gardens. So I have some other uses I'm going to show you today of what I'm going to do with these, as well as storing a bunch. And I've got a lot more leaves to bring down, but i got to get them to the backyard. And I don't want to drive down my back driveway and pack the snow and make ice and maybe get stuck back there. So I'm just going to use a wheelbarrow. And I uh, haven't used a wheelbarrow in the snow up here yet, so we're going to give it a try and see how this goes. And that's my trip. i got to go all the way down there with these. So we'll see how this, uh, how this works out. And uh, surprisingly well. So when the snow gets deeper, when I bring uh, other leaves down here, I'm going to have to just carry them back here. But at this amount of snow and packing it down my little trail, I'll... I should get them down here without any problems. And again, I can't use them in the garden. I wish, you know, there's places in the garden I still wanted to insulate, but that's going to probably not happen unless we really have a weather, a drastic weather change for the warmth. But I think winter has locked us in. So it just took several trips. I think it took three or four trips. I can't remember. I think I have nine or ten bags. Three trips probably. But just I started to store them back here. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to give the cows the last bit of green in the yard. And that's my last kale. I call it a bush because it was a pretty good size uh, plant. That's all the green I have left to give the cows, and we'll walk down and uh, see how excited they are about this, uh, seeing this amount of green. Usually the cows come running when I when I uh, bring them a treat, or at least trot over, and uh, they're now on hay, strictly. And let's see how they react to this. Yep, they look pretty excited, don't they? Not. So, Yeah. They did make it over, and they did enjoy it. Uh, again, these cows have become my buddies, but a little bit, but the big one is a lot more comfortable with me. As you see here, if I make any sudden sudden movements, the little one freaks out. So, yeah. But they enjoyed a little bit of little bit of green, and that's all I've got. That is literally all the green I can give them, unless i got some kitchen scraps, but those usually go to the chickens. So, so we'll see. But they did, you know, check out the iceberg, and, uh, yeah, they like to lick the iceberg, so... That'll give them something to do, and I'm sure I'll have more icebergs for them, but uh, that'll be here till spring, probably. So we'll see how many icebergs I get. So now I have all these bags of leaves, and as you see here, there's a problem. Because <clears throat> cows like plastic, and they see plastic, and they're going to bust through my fence. And uh, the little one's busted through a couple times this year. The big one hasn't yet, but if I keep the temptation right next to the fence, he is going to get through there, and I'm going to have a problem. My outside perimeter fencing in uh, the garden part of the yard is not cattle-proof. It's, it's, it's just welded wire, so... It'd be a bad thing if they got in here. They'd probably bust out onto the street. So they shouldn't have much temptation here if I, uh, there's nothing on this side of the fence that looks good to eat. Uh, but I thought I'd give them a few leaves and just see if they like them. And again, cows eat leaves in nature. You know, that's just a natural thing. They like to eat trees. So I'll give them a little bit and see if they like them. These are all maple leaves from my house in Salt Lake, and they don't have any maple trees down here. Uh, mine died. So, so they don't know what maple leaves taste like, whether there's any difference in regular leaves. But let's see how they like them. And as you see here, they sniff through them a little bit, and they're nibbling, but, yeah, not real excited. They've got hay now, so so uh, we'll see if they uh, this pile disappears or not, but 
I've got to do something with all these bags, though, uh, because they're going to be just seeing those, and that'll be a temptation for them. But, yeah, I see the big cow always wants a scratch, but now he's becoming all about tongue, and he wants to lick everything. So, yeah, he's fun to fun to pet. And even the little one let me pet his nose a little bit, but he's still a little 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 skittish. But, yeah, we don't know how long we're going to have these cows, probably till February, I think. Uh, then they'll go to freezer camp. But now I thought I had since I have these bags of leaves, and I better get them out of the eyesight of the cows. So I'm going to go ahead and insulate the worms a little better. I think one more bag of leaves uh, will uh, will be adequate for them for the for the remainder of the uh, winter, and uh, yeah, they'll uh, they'll it'll be used as insulation. And then when they run out of their manures, they'll uh, get in here and and they'll eat the leaves. But that'll be in the spring probably when I wet the leaves because they don't like to eat dry materials. Worms need moisture, so I'm just gonna take a bag and give them a whole bag and kind of heap it up. And I don't want to smash it down too much because that kind of defeats the R value of the uh, insulation of the leaves, but. Yeah, I want it full so that they are they have the best uh, chance at uh, at staying warm and being good. Again, red worms or red wigglers can live. You know, I've, I bought them like 35 years ago once, and I've had them ever since. So they readily live uh, in cold climates, and as long as you give them a little insulation, you'll always have them. So from that initial purchase, I was even able to sell red worms at the farmers markets when I was doing that. So. Yeah, they, uh, I wasn't the best at getting them to reproduce as quickly as possible, but uh, I was able to sell a few hundred dollars of worms, and uh, they're like $20, $25 a pound. And the problem with worms is separating the worms. That's the biggest pain. You know, you can grow them, but then you got to get them separated because you can't just sell a bunch of soil with them. you got to sell them a pound. If it's a pound, you got to sell a pound. So, so that, takes, uh, that takes some time. So that $20, $25 for a pound is uh, about what you make for an hour's worth of work. So, yeah. It's okay worth money, but not the greatest, and it's a limited supply, obviously. Well, I'm going to use some of these bags, and I'm going to use them in the chicken pen. And I use the, I like to put leaves in here because it is my compost system, but it does help to you know, insulate the chickens' feet, so they'll be more comfortable coming out here. But the main reason I put leaves in here is because it gives them a little activity. They like to dig through things and looking for bugs and looking for grain. And I always throw a little scratch in here. Now, I don't want to put too much scratch grain in here because I don't. that's not, should not be their main diet. It should be the layer food. These older chickens are not laying, so it's, you know, it's probably better they eat this food because it doesn't have quite as much proteins and calcium when they, they don't need it. But uh, they're scratch grain, and I'm just going to, since I'm down here for a few days, I'll just give them a cup a day. When I'm gone for a few days, I throw a few cups in here just so they have the, you know, some activity. Again, winter's a long season. If they do come out of the coop on a nicer days, they got to have something to do to keep them busy and there's a look at the uh, scratch uh, scattered out and a close-up, and they'll dig through that, and they'll bury some of it, and uh, it'll sprout, so they'll have some greens too. So my next video is going to be all about taking care of winter chickens uh, or chickens in the winter, and uh, and that'll be a, a good video for the, for the next one. That should be a, a lot of use. I'll give you all my tips and tricks and what's important with uh, winter chicken keeping. But, yeah, this is about all they do all winter. Is, uh, I leave the light on just because I don't want them in a dark coop, a cold coop, and they just sit there on their perch. Uh, that's about all they do. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. And uh, winter has set in and the winter chores are here. So it's uh, it's that fun time of year when you got to take care of your animals as long as you have them. And uh, it's pretty important. But hey, I'm about three quarters of my way to my goal of um, getting monetized on this channel. And I'd really appreciate it if you could help me get there. I predict that'll happen within this next year. And I'm hoping you can help me speed it up a little bit. Uh, I've got 361 videos out so far. So I think I put in the work. And I hope that you guys, if you like my videos, you can help me grow my channel so that uh, yeah, I can keep on putting out videos and, uh, and making a little money with doing it. Thank you.